The shilling weak, we know that, but now it's exacerbated by security threats on the back of those very unfortunate bombings. What impact is that having on sentiment and on your outlook for the shilling going forward? Uh, thanks, Lerato. Um, for the shilling going forward, it is a dire situation at the moment. Uh, like you said, security concerns is a big factor that many of our foreign clientele look at. Um, it's already been an uncertain period for the country. Uh, the security concerns now are adding to that factor. Uh, we do expect the shilling to remain relatively w at the levels there at the moment. The central bank has been very aggressive in its, stand, in its support for the shilling in the last week. Um, if I'm sure you're aware that they came in into the market through repo and also pumped in dollars on Thursday and Friday last week. So that's given support to the shilling in that uh, they've starved the market of shillings and many of the players can't, can't speculate anymore on the dollar positions they had, they had been doing earlier on in the month. The strategy of the central bank to come into the market, as you're saying, with reverse repos, it seems to have yes. worked nominally is the word I'm going to use, because although we're seeing mm -hmm. the shilling at 100 as opposed to 107, it's still a mm -hmm. currency under pressure. Do you think as a strategy, it's a strategy that's going to have significant impact going forward? I think so. Um, the role of the central bank is to give uh, the economy certainty. Um, expectations need to change with regards to the direction our economy is taking. Um, with these short-term measures in terms of supporting the shilling through uh, reverse repos and direct influence into the FX market through pumping in dollars, we can slowly change the expectations that the market has for the shilling. Once that's changed, we can see the long-term support the shilling needs, and we should see some recovery from that. All right, we've also seen the central bank releasing its books for the last quarter and fiscal year. Now, this is quite interesting yes. that we look at the central bank as a business. When you look at their balance sheet, are they doing well? Um, not, not necessarily. <laughs> um, you can look at it at two fronts. Um, in terms of the, of the reserves, they have been declining. Uh, they're not at the levels that they should be. Um, we're currently at a 3.2 month uh, level instead of the four month level that the central bank would like to have them at. Um, but if you look at it in terms of shillings, um, when you look at the dollar positions, as a result of the weakening shilling, we do see a gain um, when you look at it at a shilling standpoint. But fundamentally, it's not a good position in terms of their balance sheet. Yeah. It's still weaker than it should be. Um, in that response, they've been looking at the extended credit facility we have with the IMF, um, trying to gain uh, 200 to $250 million to $350 million right. to bring in support um, for the shilling. If they can do that, we can support our balance of payments going forward and hopefully the market right. can take the shilling where it should be. Just reading through the business daily, it is suggested that uh, the CBK has been able to move from a deficit of over a billion shillings to a surplus, uh, the revenue somewhere in the region of 39 billion, and that's being attributed to actually gains from a weakened currency. Now, I find that quite interesting. How do you explain the discrepancy where a devalued currency would still generate revenues for the central bank? And as you talk about the reserve position, what does that mean in terms of the central bank's ability to build up its war chest going forward? Unfortunately, that's just an accounting number in terms of a weakening shilling. The fundamental numbers behind that are still um, not positive. Um, the surplus is just as a reaction, it's just as a um, reflection of the weakening shilling. Nothing, nothing fundamental behind that. All right, uh, looking at fixed income assets in Kenya, because at least these mm -hmm. ones have been able to really give us a better gauge of the net debt position of the country and the ability of, uh, or the willingness of foreigners to buy up some of your debt. How have the fixed income assets performed? Because one of the issues in Kenya is that even though we've seen a very steep interest rate hike of 400 basis points, um, the, the, the rates are still much lower than inflation at 17%. There's a bit of a gap there. That is very true. Um, as a result, we haven't seen as much foreign inflow as we would have expected earlier on. Um, foreign players still expect uh, a real return at the end of their investment, and we are not there at the moment. There's still upward movement on the interest rates, and we do expect the levels to surpass the inflation rate. Um, I'm sure you're aware of, of the recent performances of our T-bills. We have the 91 and the 182 above 15%. That's expected to grow. 
Um, we have a two year at the moment being reopened. We have rates quoting from 18 and a half mm. to even 20 percent. Um, given the current situation, we do expect the rates to increase to levels that we will see foreign inflow coming in.